how to replace an expansion vessel on a Baxi boiler. My name is Alan Hart and in today's video I've got a special treat for you today. We've got Roy from Viva Training Academy, an absolute expert trainer. He's trained me for many years. I used to go to Baxi training courses and, and Roy were always there. So we've got an expert trainer for you today and Roy's going to go through the Baxi boiler. This is a Baxi 105 and he's going to go through that and show you how to change the expansion vessel. So without further ado, let's go over to Roy. This video is for gas safe registered and trainee gas engineers under supervision. Please comply with the current regulations at the time. Hi guys, it's Roy Fugler here at the Viva Training Academy in Halifax. And today we're going to look at the Baxi SPA range. SPA Spa, you guys will be more familiar with the Baxi 105E, 80E, 80 Eco, 105HE, uh, 105 Instant. There's also Potterton versions, so a Potterton Performer 28i, Performer 28, and main versions, main 30, main 24, main 24 HE, main 30 HE. So the first one we're going to do is the looking at the expansion vessel on this instant version and we're going to replace the expansion vessel. The expansion vessel on the instant was not just used as an expansion vessel, it was also used as a thermal store. The idea behind that was in winter when the water is coming into the property a little bit colder, you have that lag with most combis getting it to the tap. So the idea of the instant was you've got seven litres of water kept at boiler temperature and as soon as the hot tap is opened it will drop straight into the plate heat exchanger so the plate heat exchanger didn't take as long to heat up. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to change that plate heat, uh, that expansion vessel. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is remove the case. Before that, I've actually done all my electrical safety checks to make sure that the boiler's isolated, it's safe for me to touch. It's of highest priority to make sure before you work on appliance that you carry out all your electrical safety checks. We don't want to end up with any accidents. So I'm going to remove the front cover. For the purposes of the video, I'm going to remove the side panel so it's easier for you guys to see what I'm doing inside that boiler. So I'm just going to slacken off these two screws. Slide up the panel, popping that out of the way and then I'm going to remove the other panels. So as you can see, we've got the, uh, the front panel, the side panel removed. The next stage is draining the boiler down. So we turn off the isolation valves to the flow and return. I also turn the cold water off, just as a precaution. We don't really need to, but it's just there, just to make sure. On this particular boiler there is a drain point on the right hand side which you can normally get some standard manometer tube onto there let's just push it up into the side that then allows you to pop your hose into a, an appropriate container or a bucket now one of the little tips that I'll give you, you've got seven litres of water in there, you're not going to get all of it out through that drain pipe. So get yourself a standard tail, a couple of three quarter fibre washers and remove the cap off the flow isolation valve. Once you've removed that, that allows you to put this hose on and then you can manipulate the diverter valve so that you can drain all the water from the boiler so obviously you're not flooding the customer's property or getting water down you bearing in mind if this boiler had been on that seven litres is going to be at working temperature so you could be looking at something around about 75 80 degrees so there's a scald risk there so just be careful when you're doing that so now we've opened the tap we've drained the pressure out the boiler so if we look round at the gauge, we're down on zero. So the next stage will be to put the hose onto the flow pipe. So we're now going to remove the cap off the flow isolation valve. So all we do, slap it off. 
open it up there may be a small amount of water comes out but because we've drained the pressure out of the boiler there's not going to be masses of water and we've got the bucket underneath catching it so we're going to put two fiber washers on there the reason we're using two fiber washers is to take up the gap so we pop the two fiber washers on tighten that in just tighten it up so for clarity and to make it easy for you to see what we're doing i've removed the plug off the overheat and the wires out of the uh, flow thermistor just so you've got a little bit of easier to see what we're doing so we have a clip there which holds the diverter motor into the diverter we're just going to remove that clip it just pops out nice and simple the diverter motor pops out the way now what we need to do is to get that diverter valve into a mid position because it's a divert it diverts water either around the, the plate heat exchanger or around the radiators you don't want to be poking your finger in there because the pin is spring loaded and there's a risk of injury so what we have is a little tool which was developed by one of the Baxi engineers all it is it's just a little bobbin with a grub screw in there that pops in and it's set at a mid position and once we lock that in it then allows us to screw that screw down and it opens the valve into a mid position so that allows us to drain down that water now the water's not going to readily come out what we need to do now is to just crack one of the nuts underneath so these are the two nuts that we're going to crack the reason we crack those is to allow air in so the water comes out we just literally crack those nuts we don't fully open them just crack them So the next stage once we've cracked those two nuts there's a third nut which we're going to undo as you saw um, we've got the vast majority of the water out so once we start undoing these there should be no water comes out this will then allow us to remove the expansion vessel right so we're going to remove the short pipe so first of all we slacken that nut and then we come in to do the other side the one which is on the top of the little pressure differential valve and then we can remove that pipe out the way which gives us more access so the next thing we're going to do is uh, remove the locking nut which holds the expansion vessel into the boiler and then we'll be able to remove the expansion vessel out the top of the boiler right so we've got the uh, the locking nut undone all the nuts undone so we now need to remove it out the top fortunately the flue on this one is running to the side so we can get it up through the back now bear in mind this expansion vessel is quite heavy it's got some insulation around it so it's not very easy to get hold of so the idea is using a pair of grips grabbing hold of the uh, Schrader valve just to give you a bit of play a bit of, play, a bit of leeway to get hold of it so I'm just going to Grab hold of it. So we grab hold. Ease it up. It's not the easiest job in the world. Once you get it so far, you can manhandle it up and out of the boiler. Because of the issues we've got with the ceiling, we need to tilt it towards us and it's now out and I'll pass it over to Alan. Right, so we've got the old expansion vessel out the boiler. This is the new one ready to go in. The water connections on both of them are exactly the same, one straight, one angled. And that's because we've got water flowing in and out of here as I mentioned earlier. There is a subtle difference. When we spin the old one around, the only connection on there is the Schrader valve. The new one 
it's got a shred rod, but it's also got an automatic air vent. The idea for the automatic air vent is that is actually on the water side of that expansion vessel because with water flowing through this, you can get air trapped up in the top, which can affect the diaphragm. And that was one of the issues that they had. So they've now brought the new version out with an auto air vent in. That auto air vent will actually make it easier for us to put the new one in. As you saw, getting the old one out is a bit of a struggle. The new one should be a lot easier because we can use the auto air vent as a handhold. So we've now got the expansion vessel ready to go in. So we're just gonna lift it up. Again, because of the angle of the roof, we're going to slide it round, allowing it to go down, and as you can see, by using the auto air vent, it allows me to slide this in. It is a little bit tight because of the insulation, but that's there to prevent heat loss through there. I'm sliding it down, and as I slide it down, I'm checking to make sure I've got the hose lined up. So the expansion vessel's now in place. They do come from the factory, from your merchants, Repressurized uh, to the correct pressure, but just as a best practice, I've checked the pressure in there and it's what it should be on this particular one, it's 0.8 of a bar. So we have checked it um, before we put it in. And the next stage now is uh, popping the locking nuts and the pipes back in. So I'm just going to lean in and pop the locking nut on. Not that that expansion vessel is going to go very far without it. And then I'll put some new fibre washers onto the pipes and connect those back up. Right, so we've uh, got the expansion vessel in. I've connected the pipes up with new washers. The next stage now is filling the system up and then going through checking it. Um, so thanks for watching. Come back uh, in the future and we'll have some more hot tips from Viva. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Roy. Absolutely amazing, as always. And thank you to Viva Training Academy as well for allowing us to come and do these videos to help you guys out. Thanks very much and thanks to everybody who watches and supports. Please put a thumbs up, put a comment, like, share, all that good stuff. Thank you.